I'm going to answer that first because the guy's laughing at me for this, but it's quite unique. I put ma a natural maple syrup on my coffee. And no one does that. Try it. You're going to like it. You won't go back. Natural maple syrup. Natural maple syrup. You can't top that, I bet. No, I can't. <laughs> I, I am a Keurig drinker. I like the Keurig, so I like the red diamond from the Keurig, and then I just put cream in there. <laughs> but no sugar, which you'd That's think true. I would put a lot of sugar in yeah. there, I don't. I, I hung out with you. I would think you had sugar. Yeah. I save my sugar for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, there's some there's some good ones along the way. Um, I mean, it was great, to, you know, when we won our first game at home and Prosper scored a uh, the game winner in extra time. Um, but you know, we I think we see ourselves about results. So it was the first playoff win, scoring that goal. Um, JJ Williams scoring the goal uh, in North Carolina. But we want to build on those. It's you know, those are those are all good first steps. But we feel like there's a lot more bigger moments for our club in the future. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna second that to say I haven't had it yet. It's coming. Um, I think there's some unique moments uh, that stretch we had in the first year of reeling off shutouts uh, with the team that we built that first year and you know we had plenty of things to work on but turning that around was pretty special for me because it was a, a, a tough thing to do yeah. but we haven't had it yet it's coming. That one's easy for me I think I have dialogue pretty much with everybody that we bring in and we say this, and we've, we've talked about this as a, as a culture, making sure we have guys that are not only good soccer players, but off the field carry the same message and, and are good people. And, and, you know, I think we've done a really good job of vetting that out and making sure the locker room is a sacred place. And I, I, I can't say this enough, as I've been on a lot of winning teams, and you can always look in the first place you look is the locker room, if that's a really healthy place. And, and we really do a good job of trying to bring those guys into our locker room. So. Yeah, I think that I'll echo that and, and not add much more because I think it's, it's, it's something we talk about quite religiously. A bit. Yeah, it's something, we, and the locker room is it's 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 really hard to be a good teammate. I mean, really to be an altruistic team teammate that you know supports the team when you're not playing. And those are those are qualities that you have to have in a locker room. Not everyone can play. So as a teammate, you're going to have the times when you you know you're on the field and, and your teammates have to support you, but the times when you're going to have to support your teammates, and uh, that's something that you can tell and. It, you know, not everyone has that right away, but we, we try to create that in the locker room that you know everyone matters, and that you know the guy next to you—that's the most important piece of the puzzle. Yeah, selflessness comes to mind. Like you got to be a selfless person, just to put your sometimes pride aside and make sure you're looking out for the bigger picture. I think there's tons of things that we factor in. Uh, obviously, personnel that's available. We look at opponents and, and we do a lot of game um, analysis and what we think we need to win games. And, and sometimes it's better with a three, sometimes it's better with a four back. Um, and then you look at their strengths and say, hey, does a three dilute their strengths or does a four do it? So it's a combination of things. And I think there's a preference, but overall, I, I think you kind of use your season to figure out which best suits you. I think it's it, it, there's a unique kind of relationship there because you have right now you have the USL has MLS teams in in it uh, second teams in MLS so they're always scouting I believe you know at least those teams that have second teams that are always you know watching players within their team and then players on other teams um, I think that there's yeah you know, there's there's still barrier we have to break where um, you know where it, it can show that a USL player can be actually sold to an MLS team not just you know, graduate up to the MLS because I think that where MLS is and where USL is going, there's a lot of you know key players. I, mean, I think MLS is, is the quality has gotten better in the last five years, and I believe the USL Championship has has grown as well. So there are players in our league that can make that transition. Um, it's it's just a matter of you know what MLS teams and what their needs are are, are where they're going to be looking is, is is key for that that you know that transfer prospect. I think there's a, there's a few things at play, and um, it's you know I think early on I think it, it'll be interesting to see how that happens. But over the course of time, you're going to just see um, you're going to see USL differentiate itself in some in some regards from the MLS um, second division, just because 
USL Championship is, is uh, such a high level and you're going to want to have those pros, you know, in that environment. And so, you know, it's still, it's still going to, you know, I think the, the next transition you're going to see and it's kind of come out at the USL meetings were that and after the 2022 season, there won't be any MLS two teams in the USL Championship. Um, which I think is an important step, and it's, it, it starts to talk about what USL Championship is, which is, you know, independent league that's, um, you know, developing players and signing players that, you know, that are, that are high quality, you know, um, professional players. And I think that's a really key differentiation and um, takes away that second division, or excuse me, makes it a second division as opposed to a minor league um, system when you do have professional teams from MLS down in your league. I think it's important for us to continue doing what we're doing. Um, you know, for me, you know, winning the, the product on the field matters, and making sure that we continue to be in, in a position to make the playoffs, fight for playoffs, fight for championships, um, build off of what, what Tommy continues to do, but do it as a club. The other thing is, is continuing to get fans out. You know, we, we we really you know pride ourselves on a on a great fan experience, but we need to have more fans coming back and, and, and living and dying by our results. I mean, that's something that's very different than, um, the, you know, minor league baseball or, or you know, some, some other leagues. We, we want it to feel, um, we want wins and losses to matter. We want our fans to, to be a part of that. We rely on a, a few things that we take um, weekly, you know, and, and one of the things I think is unique to our team is we have an Ironman award. Um, there's intangibles that we feel win games. It's not necessarily who scores more, you know, who's got more assists. It's who's making plays in the attacking half, how many balls are we winning, are we blocking shots, things like that. And our guys put together a list. And every week we kind of find out whoever has the most stats gets the Ironman award. It's crazy. It stretches out. There's probably 10 guys who've had the Ironman award. So gives them a little extra motivation to come out weekly and, and find out who that guy was. Bruno's, you know, still still rehab and recovering uh, from, a, from an injury, you know, that was was developing over time, uh, you know, this from preseason on, it was lingering. So we wanted to make sure we got him rested, get him uh, fully recovered, and, and we're hoping to have him, um, you know, at some point in, in August, the, the end of August, maybe in September, but he's starting to, to make strides to make that return. I, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm dying to watch it because I see some funny skits on it, so <laughs> uh, won't be long, I'll be watching it. So I don't know either of them, but you watch? <laughs> I, I do watch. I have not so watched which, which one am I? You are... <laughs> Because when I watch it, I'm gonna. Hold no, you to you're that. you're probably you're a combination of because Tommy has a real, real positive outlook on um, on kind of the game and some bigger picture lessons that are from the game. Um, but at the same time, you know he, he's a little bit harsher than than Ted Lasso. I mean, if the boys aren't doing doing following the game plan, um, yeah, I'm excited to see the new season because the new season just came out. But I am holding on. I I don't know. I'm waiting until I can binge uh, with my wife, because we did we watched it the first time, we loved it, so we're waiting for that. I guess that's me. Um, I don't know, <laughs> partnership is, is, is difficult, but there's certainly, we've had a, a few conversations, you know, COVID definitely um, put, a, put a season, or a match on, on pause, but there's something that we are actively, you know, pursuing to, to bring uh, it would be great to have a Birmingham match in Birmingham. Boss, are you getting I mean, busy or what? We lost, <laughs> out, we lost out on the bid. Yeah. The PSG may have snuck in there. Hmm. Hmm. I, I don't know. I, I don't treat it as a sandwich. I mean, hot dogs are unique. <laughs> As a sandwich? Uh, it's it, not a sandwich. No, it's his own thing. No, I was going to say. It's yeah. not a sandwich. Was well, a hamburger a sandwich? Is the question. I wouldn't call a hamburger a sandwich. I don't think it's a sandwich either. Yeah, no. I think those aren't sandwiches. But a, it's, it's, a, it's a great pregame meal <laughs> for the fans. I love I'll hot you, dogs. So. $2, if you go to a stadium, you got to have a hot dog. $2 cor Coach Beers, Coors Lights over here. We're all set. <laughs> Thank you.
I'll let Tommy think on that one because I'm sure he can come up with some good ones. I, I think I know where he'll start because there's been a few. Uh, that's the thing about Tommy. Is he'll, I think we've had a very open relationship and con a very. If something was bothering him, he would let me know, and vice versa. Um, but the one thing I will say, and this is a unique thing about for me about Tommy and kind of what our relationship was. So a tough, a tough thing happened when you know when I was head coach in New England, and I would I got I got fired and let go uh, midway through the season, or, or it was at the end of the season. It was probably seven or eight games left in the year, and it's always hard when that happens. Was it unexpected? Probably not, um, but. You know, you're relieving the head coach of his job, but then Tommy is the, uh, the head assistant coach, so then they have to go in and ask him if he'll finish out the year. And um, those are always tough positions to put a, friends, a, in friends in, yeah, yeah friends in, and, and put some things. But what I always re will always respect and take, and, and anyone that's in these situations, the, Tommy was asked to do it by the by the by the organization or New England, which was the right thing to do because he's, he's the next coach in line. But he just wanted to make sure I was okay with it, right? And I, obviously I was and wanted him to do it. It was a great opportunity for him. But just that kind of conversation shows you what kind of person he is and, and why when we were, you know, when we started this conversation about starting a team down here in Birmingham and I talked to ownership, I told that story about how, you know, it, it, you know rather than just saying, yeah, I'll definitely take that job, he actually told the craft, say, give me a few minutes to make sure I discuss this with Jay, give me a little bit of time because I want to make sure it's the right thing for him and then if it's the right thing for Tommy. And that was a, those are, those are big moments in the game because you don't always, not everyone functions on that kind of integrity level. And that's what we, we want to pride ourselves on um, here in, in, in Birmingham. And um, for me, that's a key baseline of, of what we are and who we are. Yeah, and I'll go even further. And we, we had a lot of conversations during that time of what a club would look like if we could do it. Um, and, and a lot of our values overlapped as far as what the culture needs to be. And everybody talks about culture, but I think we had a clear picture of what that culture looks like. And I, I've seen it take its form here and, and we both believe in it, which is, is huge. Um, something else about Jay is he can't fix anything. <laughs> that's true. I, mean, that's I, I bought him, true. A, I bought him a, a, a toolbox once and I put, I think it was a Bob the Builder toolbox. <laughs> and all I had to put in there was duct tape because he <laughs> duct tapes everything. <laughs> So that's the part of Jay that he needs to work on, fixing things. You've seen me try. I I've usually end up with more problems in the end yeah. is the, the issue. So.